now because of market also suppose how can rupee value depreciate now this is something so if you see if if there is this kasab attacking mumbai tomorrow similar kind of attack happens again all these foreign investors who have invested in indian stock market what they will decide oh india is not a safe country anybody interested i'll give them suppose somebody says government says we'll give you 2 crores please go and do business we'll give you 5 crores please go and do business in afghanistan pakistan border okay or please go do business in palestine gaza will anybody go and do business there no so one of the most important aspect for doing business is political stability and security so whenever there is this terrorist attack etc why do they do it in mumbai is there will be a fear in the investors mind so instead of investing in india why don't we invest in some other country which is more safer so what they will do there will be flight of capital so whenever such things happen suddenly you will find that our stock market is going to fall okay stock market is going to fall why because all these investors who have invested in indian stock market they will say okay fine india is not safe so they will start moving out of india so this moving out of india i'm using a word here i'm using the word called flight of capital okay so if you see uh, <clears throat> atmanirbhar bharat does not mean don't use imports of china now if you if you observe see no more chinese products earlier they were saying zoom also was kind of chinese zoom first of all is not chinese so don't use zoom first of all then give me one more technology indian technology which is as efficient as zoom you don't have okay so the problem here is if you're not using chinese imports you want to depend on indian import indian products your product cost is going to be more you cannot compete with china in the international market you should think of winning the game it's not about not using chinese products that is not about atmanirbhar bharat how do you become self sufficient before becoming self sufficient you cannot take it to the ego so first is you have to become self sufficient then only atmanirbhar you said atmanirbhar bharat and you want pfizer to come and give you vaccine okay got the point right so this is uh, uh, so quotations look good but who will implement okay now the problem is now i think you have understood what i wanted to explain and don't take it in the wrong way this is how you should think how india can beat china how can india uh, make its products cheaper how can we assemble things better can we take any benefits possible from china use chinese products but we should become efficient okay now see when something like that happens there is flight of capital from india there is flight of capital so what is this flight of capital all these investors who have invested in stock market they start moving out of india now when there is flight of capital in india means dollars are moving out of the country simple logic flight of capital i'm using the word so flight of capital means dollars are moving out of the country so when dollars are moving out of the country okay dollars have moved out of the country means dollar supply in india what is happening to dollar supply is going to decrease now dollar supply is decreasing then demand for dollar in india what will happen will increase if demand for dollar is increasing i have to pay more rupees to buy the dollar i'll pay more rupees to buy the dollar means what is happening to rupee value here rupee value is going to depreciate so like this rupee value is going to depreciate market fundamentals rupee value is going to depreciate so like this market fundamentals can affect the appreciation or depreciation of currency that is depreciation but suppose government decides no from tomorrow 1 dollar 100 from tomorrow 1 dollar is going to be 100 now that is not depreciation it's not because of demand and supply it is not because of market fundamentals it is because of a government's decision it's because of rbi's decision okay so that is devaluation devaluation of currency now the problem is okay so when our government was talking about make in india 
heard of make in india campaign no make in india make the products in india sell it abroad this was the logic of the government this was the logic of modi ji he said make in india make the product in india and sell the product abroad that is what is make in india campaign now raguram rajan he said first of all this make in india making it in india selling it abroad will not work now so raguram rajan was saying make for india make for india rather than make in india okay so there's this conflict now earlier rbi governor so make in india why the, the, there is a problem why modi ji wants to make in make in india is basically to uplift our manufacturing you are manufacturing the product you want to create jobs in manufacturing it's needed but at the same time selling it abroad means you are focusing on exports what he was saying is you are trying to be another china you want to be another china you want to increase your exports you want to depend on this you want to be another china and this is a wrong time to be another china because the globe is thinking of protectionism because the globe is thinking of protection the globe wants to protect their domestic market they want to protect their own so how you know no earlier how trump used to speak the most psychic president ever seen okay so he has us runs because of indians and chinese nobody else works hard there okay so but the way he behaves in protection is protectionism means you want to protect your domestic market so when the globe is trying to protect it their own market then you cannot maximize on exports first of all we are not good in exports other than software manufacturing exports if you do also it's not so easy suppose our 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 pulsars are there a pulsar motorcycle so you'll find our pulsars in bangladesh you'll find our pulsar motorcycles in sri lanka whatever you throw from india sri lanka will catch okay but sell it to us can you sell your pulsars to us okay so that is the situation okay so therefore make in india rather than making it in india and selling abroad make for india is something they were talking about so now i think you have got the basic difference between depreciation of currency devaluation of currency and appreciation also appreciation of currency okay so depreciation devaluation and appreciation of currency okay fine 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 till here i think uh, things are right now before this before this okay so next is suppose now from a class which we discussed if trade deficit is increasing if trade deficit is increasing what is trade deficit remember gap between imports and exports now trade deficit is import gap between import and export if trade deficit is increasing means this gap is increasing further imports are becoming more than export trade deficit is increasing now what will be the impact on currency value that is sorry i think i have to write it here what will be the impact on rupee value and can it affect inflation now can you frame form a link here if trade deficit is going to increase what is the impact on rupee value and what uh, would be the impact on inflation akle ka mic issue idi video mein so uh, now trade deficit is increasing means more imports import export gap more import than export means dollars are moving out of the country means dollar supply is less in india means demand for dollar will be more in india if demand for dollar is more in india i have to pay more rupees to buy the dollar means rupee value is going to decrease till there it is clear 
Okay, so there is a link. Now, if rupee value is going to depreciate, rupee value is going to depreciate. Okay, my oil imports, my food imports will become costly. Oil will become costly. It will become costly. Okay, so once again, okay, so I'll explain. Oil is going to become costly. Food is going to become costly. If these are going to become costly, prices are going to increase, then there will be inflation. Everybody, so here what I'm trying to say, if trade deficit is increasing. It means imports are going to be more than exports. Imports are going to be more. The gap between import and export is increasing. If import and export gap is increasing, it means more import means more dollars are moving out. You're importing a product, you're paying dollars. So more dollars are moving out means dollar supply in the economy is going to be less. So demand for dollar will be more. If demand for dollar is more, I have to pay more rupees to buy the dollar. Paying more rupees means $1 is 50, $1 100. Paying more rupees means rupee value has depreciated. Rupee value depreciated. Now, if rupee value depreciates, my imports will become costly, isn't it? Exports will become cheaper and my imports, my imports will become costly. So if imports become, and our most essential imports are what? All food and fertilizer. Though they are costly, you have to buy them because these are necessary imports. So you're definitely going to buy them. Oil will become costly. Food will become costly. Fertilizer will become costly. That means inflation. Prices will increase. Now, is it clear? Okay. So when these things are going to become costly, inflation is high, government will spend money from its pocket to reduce the prices. So government will increase their expenditure. Expenditure. Like COVID, government expenditure increased. So like that, government will spend more expenditure from its pocket. So if more expenditure is pushed from government side, government will also face a deficit. Deficit. Deficit means what? For the government, government gets money from something called as revenue. Revenue, R is revenue. Revenue, how? Tax, we pay taxes, we pay fines. Okay, that is revenue. Similarly, government spends money. That is expenditure. Revenue is incoming money for the government. Expenditure is outgoing money for the government. Now, what will happen if expenditure is increasing? Expenditure is increasing means outgoing money for the government is going to be more than incoming money. So there will be deficit in the government's budget also, government's pocket also, there will be deficit. So if there is trade deficit increasing, it can put a hole in government's pocket. It can lead to deficit in the government's budget. So this is the understanding you should get from this uh, explanation. Okay, so that means if oil, food, oil is political food. So government gives subsidy, government pays money from its pocket. So automatically prices are going to, so, uh, to reduce the prices spending. Government is spending means government's expenditure is increasing. But if revenues are not increasing and if expenditure is increasing, it will lead to deficit for the government. I'm not using fiscal deficit, all that. No complication. You just observe the links only. So government deficit will increase. Means government's revenues will come down. Government's this is the problem now currently during COVID. What happened? Okay, people lost jobs, no income tax collections less. Corporates not interested in doing business, so corporate tax collections are going to be less. To encourage business, government reduced corporate tax rates to 22%, so collections reduced for the government. So revenues are not coming for the government, but health crisis, vaccine drive, government is spending money, means it is spending outgoing is more, incoming is less, it is pushing a hole in government's pocket, COVID. And therefore, government will not release notifications for government jobs. Most of the state governments, people are crying, they're doing dharnas and all, all that. Why? Because first of all, state governments have no money. If you have cash only, no. You'll do recruitment, you'll do that, this. Everything is related to budget. Okay, so government's money, cash. Of course, along with budget, one is, you want votes also. So, But unless and until you have money, how do you handle it? Okay, so this is the issue. Clear, I think. Okay, so 
if export and import is equal it is called as balanced but generally you will not find that so export and import being equal okay so balance no issue so it is part of trade basically trade is a small aspect in your bop balance of payment no complication we have not touched 1990 sales trade is only one component of your external sector external account import export now one more question to you all remittances what is this remittances suppose your brother friend is staying abroad okay brother friend is staying abroad now they are sending money now rupee value depreciation what is the imp on the remittances india gets maximum remittances from the muslim nations okay not from us the oil producing nations so if this oil producing countries are happy only remittances will come into india more remittances okay now what is the impact on rupee value fall on remittances see remittance increases fdi increase no remittance is not fdi remittances is money that is moving into families accounts basically for your personal consumption if jeff bezos wants to bring 200 billion dollars into india that is not remittance he is bringing 200 billion dollars for doing business suppose your brother is staying abroad he is sending money to your family that is remittance personal remittance i'm talking about so remittances will increase if the rupee value falls suppose 1 dollar is 50 now tomorrow i know 1 dollar will become 60 if my brother wants to send money i'll say ask i'll ask him wait let 1 dollar become 70 then please send money so that i will get more money simple logic no so remittances will increase if the rupee value decreases okay so remittances will increase if rupee value decreases i want more money to be sent when 1 dollar is 100 simple logic if we sending 1 dollar i want 100 rupees okay so is this clear okay so this is about some uh, okay so no much much of graphs here so just i just wanted to show you one graph as part of our basics class so one is the demand and demand graph okay so purna okay so okay now you see this <clears throat> demand and what is this demand actually demand is not only your willingness to buy a product but also ability to pay i made this statement and when we are talking about demand today we can't discuss everything but when we are talking about demand there are different factors that can affect demand different factors that can affect demand okay so what are the different factors that affect demand one is obviously price is one important factor that affects demand two income if we have income only there will be demand so for example if i same graph if i take income the same graph if i take demand quantity demanded on x axis one second okay if i take quantity demanded on x axis and income income on y axis my graph will be like this okay so income also as the income increases on a general note demand should also in if the income increases on a general note demand should also increase okay so we see this uh, the regular demand graph here okay so ha huh. so income income also is one more factor of course there are exceptions to demand graphs but so if you see this graph if i'm taking price and quantity demanded it is going to be a rightward sloping graph okay so basic rightward sloping graph why is it going to be a rightward sloping graph is if you can see as the price is high quantity demanded is less when the price is less quantity demanded is more okay 
So okay. So this is a general a general aspect. General aspect. That means it's there can be exceptions to this graph. There can be exceptions to this graph. Okay. So certain products are there where uh, price is the factor for its demand. Okay. So status is the factor uh, for its demand. Okay. So there are certain uh, uh, exceptions, but this is a regular demand graph which I'm talking about. Okay. And what are the other factors which can affect demand? Income is there. Price is there. Then you have substitutes. Okay, substitutes. So coffee, tea. Okay. So if uh, coffee prices increase, people can shift from coffee to tea. Okay. So if tea prices increase, people can shift from tea to. Then you have complementary. Complementary. For example, if car prices decrease, if car prices decrease, then demand for petrol will be high because more cars sales. Okay, these are complementary. If car prices reduce, more sales of cars, then demand for petrol can be higher. Okay, so that means even substitutes. Then also preferences. So like this, for this, all these graphs will be there. We'll, later on, we'll check that in the next few classes. So preference, preference of individuals. For example, I prefer AC or ice creams in summer than winter. So based on people's preferences also, you know, demand for product can change. Okay. So now the demand has gone down during lockdown. People's consumption has reduced because people's income have reduced. And also people have, are worried about third wave. So when you are worried about the last first wave, what happened uh, after the first wave, when lockdown was pushed off, everybody started spending money. Okay. So after a kind of dip, suddenly people start spending money uh, that is in the newspapers you would have heard of this word called pent up demand pent up demand means you didn't have demand because of lockdown and all and during the first wave uh, lockdown then suddenly the government opened the economy then people started spending more pent up demand was high so growth also was okay to some extent but second wave after the lockdown is gone you can't expect pent up demand to increase suddenly pent up demand to increase suddenly why because pe people are apprehensive about third wave they expect that there may be a third wave that may come and therefore they'll be very cautious in saving they may think twice before spending money so therefore demand means again production production means again jobs everything is interlinked so i just want you all to observe the basic graph demand graph that's all but today we're not going to discuss all these graphs we don't have that time now so i think this is sufficient okay and then uh one second okay income this is income and uh income i've already drawn income and okay so that's it. So now write down the keywords. So whatever we have discussed, let's uh, put it on paper. Complement substitutes, substitute, see substitute is, suppose if I have to draw a graph, okay. So if I'm putting price of coffee on y-axis, I'm putting demand for tea on x-axis. Okay, price of coffee. Okay, on y axis and demand for tea. Okay, so this is called as a cross demand graph where I'm putting two different items in the graph. Okay, now how will this graph look like? Rightward sloping or leftward? Is this graph okay? If price of coffee is less, demand for tea is less. But if price for coffee is more, okay, 
people will shift to tea so demand for tea will be more got the point right okay so this is basically a substitute complementary somebody is asking so complementary can be suppose if i take pen and ink i take price and here i am taking demand for ink okay so if pen price is more if pen price is more demand for ink will be less okay if pen price is less then demand for ink will be more okay this is complementary but of course i didn't want to discuss that uh, now but i just want you all to understand the basic uh, demand uh, graph in the basic session okay so till here uh, i think things are clear so please write down the keywords for today all the slides all the three slides will be shared i think videos also they will uh, give you so slides will be shared okay so this is yesterday's I don't protectionism. 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 Then write down liquid currency. Liquid currency. Then write down hard currency. Hard currency in bracket write gold. Hard currency in bracket write gold. Gold. Then I don't forex reserve. forex reserve. Okay. Write down hedging. H e d g i n g. Hedging. Hedging means avoiding risk. Avoiding risk. Then write down World Bank and IMF. World Bank and IMF. World Bank and IMF. Okay. Then write down Britain Woods Conference. Britain Woods, P R E T T O M. Britain Woods Conference. Conference. Then write down Britain Woods Twins. Britain Wood. Twins. Twins means here World Bank and IMF. Britain Wood Twins. World Bank and IMF. Rupee and dollar value are decided based on market only, demand and supply, on a daily basis. Okay. Britain Wood Twins. Akshara. Okay. They decided based on market only, demand supply. Britain Wood Twins. Then I don't depreciation. Of currency, depreciation of currency. Then write down devaluation of currency. Devaluation of currency. Key value. Then write down appreciation of currency. Appreciation. Then write down SDR, special drawing rights. Special drawing rights. Special drawing rights. Special drawing rights issued by IMF. Issued by IMF. No special drawing rights. SDR. How many currencies determine SDR? Five major currencies which we discussed. Okay. Then write down. Flight of capital. One more word. One more word there. Flight of capital. Flight of capital. Okay. Then write down pent up demand. Pent up demand. P e n t. P e n t. Pent up demand. 
spent up to now. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Pent up demand, P E N T, pent up demand. That's it. Graphs are uh, okay. Simple graphs we discussed. So that's all, ma. I hope you enjoyed the economy classes and uh, uh, any uh, <clears throat> anything else. Like I think the uh, slides will be shared uh, to you and. Uh, the videos you can uh, i also i think the first v3 uh, sessions videos will be given to you okay so that's all so thank you i hope you have uh, after sdr flight of capital pent of demand i hope you have enjoyed and uh, keep uh, following the news basically okay so one suggestion is please keep following the newspaper and see what is happening around you and try analyzing more than reading so these are my suggestions generally think no think like what is happening and yes